ladies and gentlemen we are here with the uh <coughs> we are here with the predictions for week five now Tanner and Kaka playing later tonight usually I do the recap video on the power rankings before but uh Tanner and Crocs have to play and Biff and Josh I don't know when they're playing but definitely not today so uh yeah so regardless we move. Um, first game of the week is going to be me versus Josh. Um, this one matchup is going to be a weird game. Because Tusk <coughs> is like the best answer to the game to King Gambit. <coughs> but Gambit is like the best answer in the game to Dragapult. So we have like this weird triangle thing going on where Gambit beats Pult, Tusk beats Gambit, and Gambit beats Pult, you know what I mean? So, it's going to be a weird triangle thing going on there. Um, obviously, <coughs> I haven't even thought about prep at all yet. That's, you know, um, but just based on matchup, <coughs> um, I think that's pretty 50-50. Um, Yeah, I think this is really a 50-50. It could be a toss-up. Um, you know, considering... I, you know, I'll go over this more in the recap video later tonight. Uh, but considering I beat JC last week and probably a very bad matchup for me. Uh, granted, game one, very haxy in my favor. But game two, I am... Um, Game two, what's it called? I uh, I brought it back and played a lot better. <coughs> so, I would say until I lose, I'm probably just gonna give myself this. I think it's 50 50, so give it to me. I definitely think Josh can bring it to a game three for sure. Um, this is gonna be a matter. Just, no? It's better. Obviously, it's one of my games, so can't really get too much into it again. That's why I usually go over my games first in these videos, just because I, I, you know, can't spoil anything. Next up, we have JC versus Croc. Um, there was an obvious thing here is that Mantine is going to be Car Mantine and Gudra. Not even Gudra, really, just Mantine. Mantine is going to be carrying this team this whole week literally just off matchup wake charizard mantine is gonna have to work overtime this game bro but heliolisk is here and again jc always typically runs it but scarf crook is gonna be big this game just to catch off the heliolisk and the zard y but Booster Wake is an issue, but again, you have Booster Valiant. Um, I think, again, as all games do, Booster Valiant, on the timing it comes in, is very important. Honestly, if I was JC, I wouldn't even be mad if he brought it Scarf, just because how important it is in the, that you don't lose to Wake. Um... We get a Scavalier can switch in, Stack Attacker can switch in on the Fairy moves. Granted, are you switching your Stack Attacker in on a Valiant? It's a pretty scary move. Um, actually, I say this every week, but I really like Croc's matchup. Um, but again, this game's going to really come down to um, Croc playing around his Zard very well. Obviously, we only saw it one game against... <coughs> Sal, and it wasn't the greatest showing. We'll see tonight against Tanner how he performs with it a little bit more, but because um, again, Spadef Guard could be an issue. Does it eat two solar beams from his hard Y? I don't know. Maybe. I think it probably does, but very closely. Um, but boosted heat waves from Pidgeot is pretty good here because it gets through a Scavalier very easily which is a pretty good bring to stop Valiant from 6-0-ing Croc in the late game 
Uh, but even then, Booster Valiant is slower than Deoxys Speed, I believe. I actually... No, I think... I think Deoxys is slower. Yeah, this whole game literally comes down to, um... This whole game is going to come down to Valiant and how well JC plays it. Uh, I wouldn't blame him if he scarves it this game just because it's that important. Um, but yeah. Regardless, though, I'll give it to Croc. But it's going to be a really good game. Expect this to be a game three for sure. It's going to be a really good one. Next up, we have Preston versus Tanner. And Preston's been playing really, really well recently. But he has yet to find a W. Um... How do I feel this game? I mean, he has the sun and Tanner has the slush, but I don't even think he brings the titan here because it's literally a nothing burger. It doesn't really do much. Um, I mean, it's not terrible. But against like Torkoal, Typhlosion, Conk, it's not the greatest. Uh, Slow King, very obvious bring, stop the sun. Um, Chandelure is going to be working crazy this game. Terra Grass Flash Fire just destroys. You resist Cart, you resist Scovillain. You, you basically wall Scovillain and Typhlos and they literally just can't touch you. Uh, yeah, Preston literally just loses to Terra Grass, Terra F the Flash Fire Shandy. Um, I mean, I guess he is Blissey, but I think he gets Psy Shock, so we'll see. Uh, yeah, Preston's gonna have to find a way to deal with Chandelure. I mean, I guess you have the two... Preston has, like, the one team that, like, really fucks Tanner's, like, Dark Ryan Naganadel. He has Grimmsnarl with dual screens, and then he has Toxaplex Blissey. I could honestly see this being, like, the one game where neither of them come, just because Blissey is there. Uh, but Chandelure is going to go crazy this set. I'm going to say a 2-0 for Tanner, but I think that's a very light 2-0. Because I really can see Preston pulling something out here. Uh, I think Sandy Shocks is really good here. It's really good into Treads. Like, Treads and Shocks both kind of counter each other. We might see a Berry on both of them. Who knows? But yeah, uh, I think... I think Sandy has a good match, a really good matchup here, actually. And but even then, like the Chandelure, like if he's AV Chandelure, or call if he's a Calmine Chandelure and AV Chandelure Terra Grass, like there's literally nothing Preston can do. So we will see, we will see. Next up, Battle of the Brits, Noah versus Biff. Um. And Nihilip is in a weird spot here. Because, like... <sighs> you don't want to Rage Fist or Drain Punch because you're making contact and then Volk can stop you. Gengar's faster than you unless you're Scarf. Gallade kind of fucks you. <sighs> this is a weird one for Annihilate. I feel like Annihilate without Terra just feels really bad. Not like bad to the point where it's undraftable but it makes these matchups a lot harder for it because you can't just get those free rage fist boosts i mean you can by switching into moves that you know you can eat but it's not the same as terra um but i think ferrigraph as always has a pretty good matchup here which is crazy because I thought that was going to be one of the weaker Terra Captains <laughs> going into the season. But I think Frigoraf has a good matchup outside of Bronzong. Bronzong just shits on that thing. <coughs> I think Bronzong in general is going to be a big issue for Noah's team to break. We will probably see the Salazzle with Corrosion. Um, yeah, in general, I think Biff has the matchup here. I think this will prob. I think this would go to a game three. I think they've both been playing it equally. Obviously, we still have to see Biff versus Josh. We'll see if Biff cuts it even at the two and two, or he falls down to one and three like he did last season. But even if he falls down to one and three, I think this will still be a really good set. <laughs> it's just if Biff, if he does fall to Josh, can he regain the mental? Because I think that was a uh, 
I think that was a big issue with him last season was he just kept losing. I think he was like 1-6 and six or 1-7 and seven before he got his second win. So for Biff, it's about stopping stopping the ball from rolling. You want... <coughs> obviously, whenever you play Josh this week, you got to stop the ball there. If you can't stop the ball here, you have to stop the ball at Noah. You cannot afford to go down 1-4. to four. You have to cut it at 2-3. and three. If you fall down 1-4... to four, be very tough for you to pull it back this season. Next up, we have B versus Tabs. <coughs> <coughs> this is the most important game Mega Steelix will ever have in its life. Mega Steelix destroys Tabs or B's team. Uh, like an Iron Defense Body Press set. <coughs> if you're like Iron Defense Body Press Heavy Slam. It literally kills everything. The only issue is that you just need to get the um, Moongus out of the way so you don't get slept. But you have a Roserade and a Torn. So, but Urshifu scary. But in general, I think Taz is a pretty easy matchup here. Um, obviously, Urshifu is very scary, but again. Um, I think Tab with double intimidate core, you can run clear amulet, <coughs> but <coughs> yeah, I, I think this is a pretty easy game for Tabs. I granted B's been playing better than Tabs, but Tabs hasn't even been playing bad. It's just normal Tabs things, but I really do think this is a pretty easy game from the win, just off matchup. Because uh, even then, like, I mean, he has Jellicent. For Dracovish, which is very obviously coming, but he can just crunch, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it, this is going to be a very, really rough game for B to win. Yeah, I, I would give the, this is probably very one-sided. Next up, we have Chris versus Chase. Um, now, the interesting thing here... Is I mentioned this at the beginning of the season, and that's that Curse has like a pseudo rain team in Klefki, Toad, and Ludi. Whether he decides to bring it here or not, I have no idea. Again, I haven't talked to anyone about their week five matches yet. We just got done week four, so I literally have no idea. We could see a potential rain team from Curse, but. Are you giving rain to Manaphy and Lantern? Because Lantern is water absorbent and everything. Obviously, Ludicolo can do it. I mean, both of Curse's rain sweepers can deal with Lantern, so it's not the biggest deal. Uh, but are you giving rain to Manaphy? That seems a little scary. Um, but in general, I think if Chris plays the weather game, it gets very interesting. I think that's honestly probably his best way of winning, just looking at it. Uh, but Ch for Chase, it's going to be a very interesting game to see if he brings the Mold Breaker or not for Weezing. Uh, because you want the Mold Breaker for Weezing, but you also want the Sand Rush for everything else. Granted, he's a Fairy type, so you can just Iron Head. But Chris can run the Babiri Berry and Willow Wispy, so... <laughs> it's going to be a very interesting game. Uh, Klefki can also Magnet Rise on Drill, and that feels bad. But are you Magnet Rise, Rain Dance? Uh, what, whatever else you draw, I don't know. But yeah, I, I think this is going to be very 50-50. Both of them are 3-1, and one, so this is going to be a <coughs> very good game. And... The issue is the Spectrier. Is that... I think Scar Spectrier outspeeds Drill and Dracozole in the sand. I could be wrong, but... Gut feeling tells me that... It, gut feeling tells me it probably outspeeds Dracozole. Drill, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but if you Scarf yourself... You gotta, t you gotta predict the Tyranitar coming in. Otherwise, he can just Pursuit Trap you. Um, but in general, Spectrier is in a weird matchup because if you don't get that Terra Blast prediction right and you are a choice item, you get Pursuit Trance by Titar. Obviously, he can Terra Fighting, 
and then he resisted pursuit, but even then you're giving T-Tar free switch in. Granted, I mean Chris has mega low plenty and low kick, so I guess T-Tar's not the biggest issue, but uh, Chase does have an answer to the Shadow Balls. So, I, this can be really close. Honestly, I think this is probably going to be set of the week. There's a lot of good games this week. I feel like last week was a lot of like one-sided games. This week, it's a lot of like close ones. I, I'm just going to say Chris. Just because Chris might... Like, Chris always pulls something out of his ass. And I think we'll probably see that again. Not in, like, a bad way pull it out of his ass. But, like, just, like, a, he usually cooks something up that works pretty well. So, we'll see. But I think this is going to be a really good game. I think matchup-wise, it's pretty 50-50. Next up, we have Nick versus Sal. If you asked me this two weeks ago, I would have just skipped over it and not even mentioned it in the video, but Nick played pretty well against me, almost brought me to a game three. And last week, he brought Chris to a game three, and it was very, very close. A very close game. So Nick, Nick's stocks are on the rise. We could potentially see his first win soon. Is it this week? Probably not, but it's coming up. Um... Nick just does not have a way to deal with Melmetal. I mean, he has Landorus, and he has Senescorch, but that's it. Everything else just gets absolutely ran over. And I mean, if you want to hit a Focus Blast with Alexander or Lele, you can be my guest, but he can tear a Flying to resist it. Uh, and if you want to Psychic, like, he Steel Resist. So it's going to be a very... Uh, Metal Metal's about to put up some Hall of Fame numbers here. Um, I think Starmie is another good one. Whether you bring Assault Vest or you bring just, like, an offensive one, I don't know. But I think Assault Vest could be good. Just eat hits from the Ley Lane Zam. Or just maybe Bulky Starmie with Recover. <coughs> could be good. <coughs> um... Ursaring also feels really good here because, again, the issue with Lele and Zam is you have to hit Focus Blast some weeks, and if they're not hitting their Focus Blast, Ursaring is getting some pretty good numbers. Drapion also has a crazy matchup here outside of the uh, land outside of Landorus. Drapion has a crazy matchup in this psychic team, like. Yeah, I mean, Nick's been playing good, bro, and I really like his progression, but this is a bad match. Like, Drapion, like these three right here, Drapion, Ursaring, Melmetal, these three are going crazy. Like, I traditionally, I would say Cat, but he has Gudra for Sap Sipper. He has Ascendus Horse Aquatus, this flower trick, and then you can't sucker punch these guys in terrain. So, Cat doesn't really have a good match up here. But these three right here, Drape, Earthstring, Melmetal, these three are going absolutely insano mode. Yeah. And last game of the week, we have Wu versus Emnez. Uh, On matchup. Uh, Wu gets destroyed by Kiram. <sighs> He's destroyed by Kiram and Lycanroc. So Doxbun is going to be pretty important in this game, but he could also bring Skullipede. Because after one speed boost, you outspeed the Beedrill. Um... Yeah, and that's his offensive threats go crazy into Wu. Like, Kiram, Lycanroc, Skullipede goes... Yeah. Like, like, I would say Skarmory is good for Lycanroc and Skullipede, but Kiram, Ice Beam is destroying that thing. And if you're not fully physically defensive, are you eating two close combats from a Lycanroc or a Stone Edge from a plus two Skullipede? I don't know. Uh, We probably... I don't know. We might see a Sash Dug Trio just to like deal with Skullipede or Lycanroc. Like, I'm being serious. Obviously, Wu can rely on the Shed Tail this game just to get free pivots into things he needs to get in. But this is going to be a very tough game for Wu. 
Golipede, Kieran, Lycanroc is going to put on a ton of pressure. Like, the thing about Wu's team is, like, it does a lot of damage. Like, he has some good damage dealers, and his bulk is good. Like, it's good, but his bulk doesn't really have recovery. Like, Skarmory has Roost, yeah, but, like, Suicune, you have to rest, which doesn't feel the greatest. Wo Chen has a Leech Seed, which every grass type has. And Dox Bun has a Wish, but it's base 57 HP, I believe. So, you know, it's, it, he has recovery, but it's not the greatest. Uh, yeah, I, I think Wu's been playing pretty good this season, but I, I think this is probably going to be a 2-0 for Emnez. Like, this is just not... I, I mean, Wu almost beat B, and that was a near-impossible game, I think, for him to win. I think Wu actually surprised me a lot. I, honestly, I think Wu played better than B, if I'm being honest. I think Wu played a lot better than B in that game. I, I wouldn't say a lot, because I think Wu trolled his brains out, but I think Wu played better in the first half of that set a lot, like a lot, like he's about playing B a lot, but, you know, when you can just SD Terra Dark or Shifu, it's, uh, it's not that hard to win a game, so, yeah, um, we're in week five. We just got done week four, so uh, we got ten more weeks of Spectre and Nurse Eve in the league, folks. Ten more weeks. Keep it on the countdown, but um, a little less than two months. <laughs> oh my god! But yeah, this is gonna be a very tough game for Will. <coughs> this is gonna be a very tough game. Yeah, I kind of went over that decently fast, faster than usual. Probably because I've worked in a bit, but. Yeah, I think that's pretty much everything I kind of wanted to go over. I definitely, definitely think Chris versus Chase is going to be like the most interesting matchup for me. Just because it might be a weather battle. If it is, these two really like that battle, but Lantern can't really deal with the Toad and Ludi in the ring. Like, you can be Rindo for this, but then that destroys you. But if you're shook it for this and that destroys you so we'll see we'll see but in my mind this is the game i'm definitely looking on the most and, uh especially because also they're both three and one they go to the rankings yeah curse is three and one plus six and chase is three and one plus four so they're both like top teams in the league right now so interesting to see but yeah i'm gonna get out of here uh those are the my predictions for the week. If you're mad, El Bozo, I'm going to get out of here. I'll see you all later.